Hello my quilting friends! Today I want to show you how to modify a free motion quilting foot to fit the Eversown Sparrow 20. So straight out of the package, this low shank darning foot isn't really all that well designed. Uh, we've got a solid toe here, this is a full oval shape. We've also got this bar here and that's going to cause us some problems and I'll show you why. I'm going to attach it here to the back of the machine. So the one thing you always want to make sure you do is drop your presser foot. So this is one of those situations where it can look like your foot is down because it's hovering right over the surface of the quilt, but really you want to always double check that presser bar lifter to make sure that you're in the down position. Okay, let's talk about how this foot is designed and why I don't think it's all that great right this second. First off, it's kind of a pain to pull up our thread. We've got to slide it away tug up that thread, then grab a hold of it, pull it through the foot. Yeah, I'm kind of used to doing that, but you know, it's a little bit of a pain and it's hard to get used to. So that's the first thing is I want to open up this foot so that way it's an open toe right here in the middle. I'll be able to easily see the needle and I'll be able to control that thread a lot better. So for that reason, I want to break open the toe. And then the other thing I want to do is control this hopping. So I'm going to start quilting. And you can see how that foot is jumping up and down. Well, let's slow down. I'm going to just show you just how easy it is to start forming really big stitches. This is a foot that I feel like you have to go fast with it the way it's designed because it's jumping up and down. And for every time it jumps, it's kind of squishing your quilt here. And that's a problem, but we can easily fix it. See how it's designed is to lift the needle. And for every time it lifts the needle, it hits that bar on the top of the foot and that's what lifts the foot up. And then when the needle drops back down, it drops the foot back down. So it's kind of a lift and then drop and squish <laughs> motion here. So it lifts up and you can move the quilt just a little bit, but look at all that space that, you know, your needle's still not in the quilt, but you can't move it because it's already dropped down again. That's what forces you to have to stitch really quickly. So let's take this foot back off the machine. I'm gonna show you how to break open the base, break off that top bar and fix it so it fits your machine so much better. In order to modify your free motion quilting foot, you're gonna need a pair of clippers like these. They're, these are just jewelry nips, a pair of needle nose pliers. Again, you can find that in the jewelry section of pretty much any craft store. And then a nail file. You probably already have this hanging around somewhere. Uh, I also have some little rubber bands and these are the rubber bands from a rainbow loom kit. And I found that I needed three of them for this modification. So that's all you need in order to fix your foot. So the first thing we're gonna do here is clip open this base and it's got some handy dandy <laughs> little red lines printed on here for you. What I like to do is line up my clippers with kind of at an angle like this where the back end of the clippers are lining up with that line. So I'm going at an angle and I'm just going to grip and it's going to break. There we go. And then now I'll do the other side. So just like before, I'm kind of going at a slight angle here, making sure that the back side of the nippers aren't hitting the back of the foot. I don't want to clip through too much of this plastic, just that little bit. There we go. And I broke open that toe. So there's a few sharp edges here. So you want to take a nail file and just spend some time filing it down. You don't want any sharp edges, obviously, to catch on your fabric, to catch on your quilt. That could, you know, really catch on your batting. So take your time filing this down and get it nice and smooth. So that's how we fix the base. We now have a nice open toe, so it's gonna be super easy to see the needle and deal with our thread. So the next step is to fix this bar. This is what causes that foot to hop up and down. You can see how it runs up against that spring and that's causing that bouncing. So the way we fix that is to grab our needle nose pliers and I'm just gonna grab the end and bend it back. You might wanna go in little short bursts you know, just move a little bit of metal at a time. You don't want to try and go too aggressive on it. And we don't want to break it off. You could, you know, obviously these are metal nippers. You could cut it off, but we actually want this little bit of metal to stay in place. And uh, I actually like to bend it to the side if I can, but if I can't, that's not a big deal. I think it'll still work just fine. 
And it's not the end of the world if you break it off. I actually did <laughs> break this one off and you can see I've already done my, my wrap here with my um, rubber bands, but I'm gonna unwrap that and you can see I actually, I did not form a loop on this one. I broke that off cleanly, it's still okay. The main reason that you want this little bar at the top is because it stops the rubber band from falling off. That's pretty much it. Okay, so now that we have this bent over, what's gonna happen is that your foot is going to now rest in the down position all the time. And that down position's pretty low. That, you know, that was kind of squishing the quilt. So we need to adjust the foot to get it to the right height so that this base just skims right along the bottom of the quilt so that as you're pushing the quilt underneath the foot, it's just kind of skimming right underneath the surface. We don't want it to be squishing, but we also don't want it too high or that can create some skip stitches. So that's where I use these little rubber bands. So what we're gonna do is just take it and run loops here, and that's between this plastic, where the spring is, and that bent bar that I just bent back. And again, the reason that we need this is because the resting, we have now basically taken off the hopping action of the foot. We've taken that away by bending the bar back. And so now we need to lift the foot to the correct height, otherwise this foot will be squishing the quilt all the time. Just keep looping and looping and looping and then I found I needed another one on top. I've already done a little bit of experimenting and playing with this but it's one of those things that you might have to adjust if you are using a really thick fluffy batting like a wool batting then you might need to actually go in and adjust your loops to adjust your rubber band and I'm going to explain why. So basically right now we have the ability to change the height of the foot by how much space is being taken up up here in this uh, area. So, okay, let's say that you put a very fluffy batting on your quilt. Well, you want to lift the foot, so you want to add more loops. Let's say that you have a very thin batting and it's really, really low. That means that you want the foot to come down further. So you'll pull on it, that can bring it down. You know, you've got a little bit of compression you can create there. You can also take off a few loops and that's just fine too. Now spread these loops out, nice and long. Now we'll take it to the machine, fit it to the machine and get it just right. So I tighten that up and I drop the foot and just give it a little test. And this is actually almost perfect. You want the foot to be skimming the surface. And if you listen, you can hear it kind of dragging ever so slightly against the quilt top. And that's what you want. You don't want it to be so high that the quilt is bouncing around underneath it. That can create some skip stitches. You also don't want it so low that you can't really move the quilt underneath it smoothly. So let's pull up some thread and do a little quilting just to check it. So I'm gonna now be able to just tuck those thread tails right underneath the foot drop the needle back down again, and then now I can quilt and notice it doesn't hop anymore. We've taken that hopping action away. I can now easily quilt, I can speed up, or I can quilt slowly. And that's gonna help me be able to travel stitch and do detailed stitching, be able to do any design that I wanna stitch because I'm no longer distracted by that hopping, I can see the foot, I can see the needle really clearly, and that's all going to work out great. So that's how you modify your darning foot in order to fit your machine. And just a quick reminder, let's say you put this on the quilt and it feels too low. It feels like the foot is squishing against your quilt and you can't move it. What do you do? That means that you need to add more loops up at the top. Now what happens if you put your foot on your machine and it's too high and it feels like it's bouncing around? That means you've lifted it too high, take away some loops. It's that simple. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot and you're excited about getting your free motion quilting foot set up and ready to go so you can do some beautiful quilting. You can find both this foot and this sewing machine on my website. Come and check it out at leahday.com slash sew20. Until next time, let's go quilt.